Hi. So I've just come back from KubeCon where I was talking about modern service networking with Console Connect, Envoy, and Kubernetes. Now, unfortunately, I had a few problems with the network, which meant that my demo didn't quite go to plan. But I thought I'd record a short video to show you all just how easy that is. So Console Connect is a new feature of HashiCorp Console, and it adds service mesh capabilities. It integrates incredibly well with Envoy and Kubernetes. And in this short demo, we're going to see how all of that works together. So my name is Nick Jackson, and I'm a developer advocate at HashiCorp. Let's see what we're going to build today. So the demo that I have for you is, is going to show how we can run Console Connect and Console on top of Kubernetes. And we're going to see how we can use the new annotations feature inside of Console Connect to automatically inject Envoy sidecars into your pods. So the way that the service mesh works is that all traffic is secured by Envoy. So all inbound traffic to services goes through Envoy. And if your application, so for example, in this instance, the public API needs to talk to the machine learning, which is a black box service, again, that's going to talk to Envoy via the local host. So let's see how we can set that all up. So I already have a Kubernetes cluster up and running, and it's it's got nothing installed on it. I've got a few pods, such as a um, Nginx Ingress, but nothing uh, nothing particularly, certainly no application and certainly no console. So what we need to do first is we need to get console running on top of Kubernetes. So what we've done at HashiCorp is we've created a Helm chart, which makes it really, really easy for you to do that. So let's just have a quick look at how we can do that and how we can use this Helm chart to set up console on top of our Kubernetes cluster. So I have a look at my, my current running Helm charts and I've got Cert Manager and Nginx Ingress. So what I want to do is I want to install console. So I have console, the Helm chart, which is just sitting in my local folder here. So I can just use Helm install to get that running. So I'm just going to use the command helm install. I'm going to give it a name of console and I'm going to specify the path to my helm chart. So we're currently working on getting this integrated into the helm repository, but for now you can just clone it from that GitHub repository. Let's run it. So that was pretty quick. It's all deployed. Now it's still going to take a little bit of time for those containers to create. If we take a quick look at those, we can see that they're actually now all running. So if I go back over to my Kubernetes dashboard and refresh it, so we just need to wait for those readiness probes to complete, and then console will be up and running. So what I'm doing here is I'm installing three console servers and I'm installing a console agent on top of every node. It's currently a three node cluster. The other things that we've got running here is the console connect injector webhook. And this is going to allow us to add an annotation to our pod specs. And that will automatically add the Envoy proxy to our pods and also the console sync catalog. So this is a two way sync. So any Kubernetes services which are registered will automatically be synced to console and any console services will automatically be synced across to Kubernetes. So in fact, you can use console's DNS for all of your Kubernetes services. You don't necessarily need to use core DNS. So that only took a couple of minutes to come up. So what's happened is the console server has automatically clustered. So it's aware of all of the other server instances and also all of the agents. The agents have automatically been able to join the server. I've not had to do anything, which is really, really cool. Just back onto a point that I made earlier about core DNS and console DNS. And what we're going to show you in a bit is that we're going to show a service which is running outside of Kubernetes and also how we can use Connect to secure workloads between Kubernetes and outside in virtual machines. Now, by using console's DNS, 
In addition to the capabilities of Console Connect, you've also got the ability to use and reference services which exist outside of your Kubernetes cluster from Kubernetes, just using that sort of approach that you're most used to by just using DNS entries. Let's take a look at the console UI. So I'm just setting up port forward inside of Kubernetes using kube control to be able to access the console UI. But you can see here that I've got my services and I've got my three server nodes. If I look at my nodes, I've also got my console agents, which are running in client mode. I don't have any applications registered in here yet. So let's go ahead and set that up now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just install a few applications as part of my demo application. So I've got a few applications. I've got an ingress, which is a north south gateway, an API, a payment service, and a black box. <clears throat> so I've got a few services. I've got an ingress, I've got a black box machine learning application, an API, and a React.js website. And all of this is going to connect together using the Console Connect service mesh. So firstly, let me just run that ingress. And also my API, my machine learning, and my website. So while we wait for those pods to come up, let's take a look at one of our specifications for the API. So as you can see here, there's nothing particularly unusual. All I'm doing is specifying a deployment. Now this is a front facing service. So I do have a Kubernetes service for this. I'm specifying the number of replicas and I'm just having a single instance here. And there's, there's nothing unusual there. Now where it starts to differ is when we want to start connecting this up using the console connect service mesh. So what I'm doing is I'm defining these annotations. So I've specified that console connect inject is set to true and that's going to automatically add our envoy instance to our pod and i'm also specifying the service name so this is going to be the name by which any of the other applications in the mesh can connect to this service i specify the service port and i'm also specifying the upstreams so an upstream allows me to make a call to another service in the mesh so as I mentioned earlier, all traffic goes through the mesh. So instead of referencing that service using something like core DNS entry, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reference it via localhost. So this connect service upstreams actually specifying the name of the upstream, which I'd want to connect to and the port, which I want to connect to it on. So Envoy is going to expose in this instance, port 8003 on localhost, and that's going to point to my Facebox machine learning API. So therefore in my specification for my container, all I have to do is specify the local host address. I don't need to specify anything else. I don't need to, to specify the, the actual absolute domain or anything like that for it. The service mesh is going to take control of all of that, all of the load balancing of that and all of the circuit breaking as you would expect. So our pods now, they're all running. We've got our website instances, we've got our machine learning instances, and also our API. So let's just load that URL. All right, so that's all up and running as well. So if we take a look at those services now, and again, inside of console, what we can see is the, the Envoy proxies that we've just registered. So we've got our API proxy, and we can see our Facebook 
proxy, which is our machine learning. Let's have a quick test of how our app works. And we can see that's all working. So what Emojify Enterprise does is Emojify Enterprise allows us to take a photograph and replace any faces in it with emoji. Now, because it's an enterprise application, you can obviously buy an, a gloss photo of this photo. And I've got credit card processing. Now, my credit card processing isn't running in Kubernetes. Unfortunately, this is not a greenfield application. It's actually running inside of a Linux VM. It's a Java Spring service. Let's take a quick look at how we can set that up, because again, it's very, very easy to integrate that inside of Console Connect. So I'm just going to log into my, my payment service. Okay, and I'm logged into there. So all I've done is I've set up some really simple system D jobs. Let's just have a quick look. So what I have is I've got my console service. So I need to run a console agent on side of my Linux VM. I need to run my proxy. And I also need to run my, my service. So let's just go through those one by one. So to run the agent on, on top of the Linux VM is pretty straightforward. So here's the systemd job for that. And all I'm doing is I'm, I'm just starting the console agent. And what I'm doing, which is quite handy here, is that I can use my Kubernetes configuration to allow this agent to automatically join my cluster. So I don't need to know the IP addresses of the console servers inside of my Kubernetes cluster. I can just provide it with a Kubernetes config and it'll automatically sign up and join, join that cluster. So let me just start that service. And you can see that that's already joined and set up there. So I've got my console servers and I can see the IP addresses there. I can also see my console agent. So this is just the standard sort of output from the, the console CLI. The next thing I need to do is I need to start my payment service. So let's, let's do that. So the, the payment service, as I was mentioning earlier, is, is a pretty straightforward thing. So it's just a Java application. It's just running Spring Boot. And if I, I look at the, the logs for that, you can see that that's just running. And this is going to be running on localhost. So it's just binding only to, to localhost. Now, in order to access that service, again, I need that proxy. So I can't do an auto inject like a sidecar because I'm using, I'm not using Kubernetes. I'm just on a, a plain Linux VM, but I can still run <clears throat> that sidecar. So again, a really simple systemd job just for that sidecar. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm not using Envoy in this instance, although I could. Just for simplicity, I'm using the built-in connect proxy. And the built-in connect proxy will run on Linux as well as on Windows. So I'm just specifying here that I want to register a service payment. I want to contact that service on localhost. Uh, sorry, uh, my console server is, uh, agent is running on localhost 8500. And I want to listen publicly on 8443. My local service address is localhost 8080. So let's just run that service.
If I pop back over to console now, what you can see is that I have my payment service, which is registered and that's passing its health checks. And I also have this payment proxy. When I look at my nodes, I can also now see that I have the, the server that the payment service is running on because I've got a local console agent running on side of that. So if I now go and try and pay for this wonderful photograph, so I'm just gonna enter my card details. Well, I'm gonna enter Paul's card details and I'm gonna hit the pay button. And that's actually gone through. And unfortunately it looks like Paul doesn't have an, enough funds to buy the photograph, but Let's take a look and just see that we can see that that has hit the service. So if I run just the uh, looking at journal control there and looking at the logs, you can see that helpfully the, the developers when they built this are outputting all of the credit card details out into plain text inside of the, the, the application. But th the request is getting through. So that request is going from from my Kubernetes, my API, which is running inside of Kubernetes, and it's getting sent through to my, my payment service. So that's, that's in simplicity how we set up things inside of console and console connect. But the key thing that we want to mention, which I mentioned in my talk is we've got to think about security. So we, we have MTLS between the services and we've got TLS for the service traffic but we don't have this service segmentation or this network segmentation. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a deny all rule. So all services deny, I'm just gonna give it a description of deny all. I'm gonna save that. And what I need to do is, that the, as I mentioned in the talk, the to, to create performance, we're gonna persist the connections between the two services. So very quickly, what I will do is I will just quickly restart my, my payment um, proxy service. So eventually these, these intentions would have automatically up, been updated and propagated around the system, but just to, to save a little bit of time, I'm going to, to save that. So now when I'm hitting the pay button, we're not seeing anything. So the payment is, is, is coming back as failed because the request isn't going through to the service. So I hit pay there and there's, there's nothing coming through. And that's because the intention inside of console connect is blocking things. So if I go back into console and I add another intention, but this time I am going to add and allow. So I'm going to add Emojify API and I'm going to have the destination of payment. I'm going to allow this. I'm not going to bother with the description right now. But if I go back and then try that payment again, it's now going through because the intention is, is there and you can see that coming through there. So that's that's how easy it is to set up console on top of Kubernetes and start to secure your, your service traffic by defining intentions. Thanks for watching. And if you want some more information, please check out the, the console website. There's also the console helm link there for you. And of course, if there's anything I can do to help, please just send me a message on either Twitter or send me an email and it would be an absolute pleasure. Thanks for watching.